Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Uh, so I got a call from the president this morning uh, announcing what happened. And he said, why don't you come to the White House? And I said, I'd, I'd love to come. And I'm honored to be here on this, this day that really does matter, I think, to the world, not just the United States. And trying to put in words what does it matter, I, how to explain it. I think last night the best of America confronted the worst of mankind, and the good guys won. The good guys and the good gal, uh, gals won. The dog, trying to find out the name of the dog. Uh, pray for the dog. It was severely injured, but it uh, just reminds me of the team concept of the military. I've been talking to the president for months about the war on terror, and every time I would bring up the topic, he would tell me without any he hesitation, I'm going to get that blank guy. And I can't use the word on television, but the president's been determined for a very long time to bring Baghdadi to justice. And I want to compliment him and his team for bringing about a result that I think is a game changer in the war on terror. The war is by no means over. The caliphate is dead and the leader of the caliphate is dead. And that's a big deal. When bin Laden was killed, that was a big deal. And I complimented President Obama. That was a hard call he made to go into Pakistan and kill bin Laden. What the president did uh, last night was a hard call. These things are not predetermined to go well. And it just tells you how good our people are. And what the president said today was very reassuring to me that when it comes to ISIS and other terrorist groups, we're coming after you wherever you go, as long as it takes to protect our country, our way of life. I just end on this. ISIS is a depraved organization that's ever existed in the history of the world. They're religious Nazis. They cannot be accommodated. They cannot be negotiated with. They have to be destroyed and marginalized. And here's the good news for all of us. Very few people over there buy into what these crazy people are selling. And it will always be in our interest, I believe, to partner with people over there who are on the front lines to make sure that ISIS types never come here and that we replace this ideology with something more sustainable. To the American people, this has been a long, difficult war. And I understand what the president wants to do. He wants to reduce our footprint and lower our cost. And he's right to want to do that. But I'm very encouraged by what I see in Syria. Maybe a new strategy that focuses on building up the lives of people in the region, having a small footprint of Americans led by the local populations, and securing the oil is a really smart idea, quite frankly. That's how ISIS survived for so long. If you can take Syrian oil out of the hands of ISIS, Iran, and other enemies and put it into the hands of the Kurds and people who fought and died along our side, then that is a really transformational event uh, in the Iraq-Syrian theater. And what I see developing in Syria is very promising. Senator Graham. Uh, you just said that the war is by no means over. Um, do you think that the president understands that? And, and also, do you think that the U.S. could have pulled off this operation without the troop presence that the U.S. has had in Syria uh, for, for some time now? Um, and are, are you concerned still about the withdrawal of most of those uh, troops from Syria? Well, when it comes to what's happening in Syria, I like what I see. We've had a... The president's position and our my position is really not that far off. We really don't need a bunch of Americans in the safe zone. The international community should do that. But some American forces deployed with the SDF to make sure the oil does not ever fall back into the hands of ISIS and Iran's not the biggest winner makes a lot of sense. When it comes to terrorism, the president changed the rules of engagement. You think the, the caliphate destroyed itself? He made a conscious decision when he went to Iraq to change the game when it came to destroying ISIS. He's had a determination to destroy the caliphate unlike anybody I've ever met. Now the question is how to keep it, keep it down. 
I think we've got a plan now to keep it down that meets his national security objectives of reducing our footprint and having others do more. And I want to lay these out separately. The president, in his remarks, mentioned Turkey's cooperation when it came to this operation. And I'm wondering if that changes your view on sanctions. I also want to ask, while the president called you, we understand he did not call other members of the Gang of Eight, even after the operation had concluded. Was that a mistake? Uh, I don't know who the He's calling family members right now. Um, I was in town, so, you know, I was right down the street. Is he calling family members? Uh, he's calling some family members now who have been victims of ISIS. Okay. And, the Foley's, and, perhaps. And I guess what I would say today is that what I see happening in Syria makes sense to me, that the president destroyed the caliphate. He's asking others to do more, and he's right when it comes to Turkey. I think the invasion has been disruptive. But at the end of the day, if we can continue to partner with the Kurds, secure the oil revenues for their sake, not Iran's sake, not for ISIS's sake, help pay the cost of the operations makes imminent sense to me. And I think the president is right to say that the conflict between Syrian Kurds and Turkey needs to be resolved. The safe zone needs to be occupied by forces other than the United States. I agree with that. Senator, Senator, it's, it's no secret that the president wanted to pull out of Syria last year. Without our troop presence there, would an operation like this have been possible? You could probably have done this from Iraq, to be honest with you. I'm, you know, I don't know exactly the details of the operation, but I think the president is focusing on the resources that uh, made ISIS so strong for so long. The caliphate was funded basically by many sources of revenue, but one of the chief sources of revenue was Syrian oil. So if you take that off the table, the terrorists in the region or in the world are hurt, and Iran containment makes sense, the Iranians would love to get this oil. The Russians have shown some desire to go down here. And I can't say this now, but I was in the Situation Room, and I'll talk to you later. The President made some pretty firm statements to people in the region that you come into this area at your own peril. Senator, you very recently said you thought that the president's decision to withdraw could be the biggest mistake of his presidency. Today, you're affirming it as a positive one. What I'm saying today is that the killing of Baghdadi uh, is a game changer in the war on terror. Doesn't mean the war is over. The president's determination over time has paid off. We don't give him enough credit for destroying the caliphate. He did this in months, not years, because he changed the rules of engagement. So what I want to talk about today is those brave men and women who planned the operation, who went in on the ground and killed this bastard. Senator, Senator, two, two questions. First, uh, is it appropriate for the president only to inform Republicans of this operation, which departs from tradition? I, 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 don't, I don't know. That's not my concern today. My concern today is that we did a good thing. Okay, so, and then Senator. second on the oil, uh, how, by what warrant or legal right in international law does the United States take the oil of the sovereign nation of Syria? Well, what you, what you don't understand is that these oil fields are in areas where this SDF operates. This was the chief source of revenue for a long time for ISIS. It is now in the hands of the Syrian Democratic Forces, which are Arab and Kurds, mostly Kurds, with a partnership with the United States. So, no, this doesn't violate any law, in my view. What it does is just good, common-sense foreign policy. I want to congratulate the President for making sure that the oil revenues never fall into the hands of the bad guys. And the way you secure this, this is a win-win. The SDF will get more money if we can modernize the oil fields. We're not going over there uh, to enrich America. We're over there to help our allies deny our enemy resources that will allow them to get stronger over time. And finally, and this is okay, to lower the cost to us. The president mentioned something. I had a, a bill that would make our aid to Iraq alone that could be forgiven but also paid back over time. Here's the one thing that's been missing in the Mideast, skin in the game. If we had made our aid to Iraq alone, they would have probably acted differently than if it's just a grant. Now the SDF, who have been good partners, have a chance with our help to increase revenue for the benefit of their people. They'll have more incentive to fight harder. Everything changes when the people you're fighting with have skin in the game. 
Now, I want to compliment the president for coming up with a model in Syria that we probably should have done in Iraq. This is a game changer with the killing of Baghdadi. This is a moment where we should all be proud of our American military and our intelligence community. This is a moment where President Trump's worst critic should say, well done, Mr. President.